This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Chandralekha is a dancer, choreographer and activist who's charted a completely individual trajectory. She trained as a classical Bharatanatyam dancer but has broken away with convention in both her life and her art to explore new frontiers of dance and create a new vocabulary. Thank you so much for talking to Star News. You were born a Gujarati and grew up in parts of Maharashtra and Bombay, but it was in the 1950s that you first moved to Madras to seriously learn dance. How did that migration, that first migration in your life happen, and how did you so completely uh, embrace a South Indian way of life? I was, um, it was Bharatanatyam which took me to Madras. I wanted to learn Bharatanatyam in a, in a consistent way. Till that time I had done some kind of amateurish uh, dancing, school, college type. But I wanted to be involved with it seriously. I loved that form. And I used to do the, you know, cutting from the magazines and all that and go on looking at it. And from that uh, thing, I wanted to make a break of by learning it in a um, proper way. So that took me to Madras. And there, then there was a the whole journey. I had to find the proper uh, guru. I saw different styles. I saw. When I was in Madras, I saw um, Shanta Rao and uh, Tara Chaudhary and Bala Saraswati and Rukmani Devi. They were all dancing at that time. I saw all of them and I, was, uh, I decided I would learn the Bala Saraswati style because that is what really drew me in, into it. Guru Elapa Pile uh, and his family of gurus were also Bala Saraswati's gurus and that brought you in very close proximity with one of the greatest dancers, Bala Saraswati. What was that association like for you personally? Obviously, I was very young and I was quite awed by uh, Bala's uh, the, her, uh, the aura that she was uh, radiating. Even like a, she would be doing the most ordinary things like eating pan or playing uh, this uh, dice, daigatam. But there was an aura, an artist's aura all the time with, uh, in her. And that she somehow, without my understanding, but I could feel, I could sense the whole rhythm of her body and her mind and her being. And uh, I was quite... Um, hooked on to that. It was also a time when you began a very close and deep association with the poet Harindranath Chattopadhyay. Uh, how did that contribute or help shape your mind, your art, your life? I, I was very young. I did need a protection in life. Otherwise, Strangely, I mean, it sounds very funny to say that, but uh, you attract all kinds of people at that time when you are young and uh, you have some so-called good looks and body and all that. And a little bit of, you know, like uh, intelligent way of reacting to everything uh, quite vibrantly. And uh, that needs a tremendous protection. I feel that when the girls want to be looking for their own space, they need very, very much, they need protection. And it is not the protection, the sheltered protection of the parents, but something which, which will uh, let you fly, you know, which, which will, you are growing your wings and you can fly. And that is very important. Harinath provided me with poetry in my life. I read lots of uh, literature with him. We read Shelley and Keats and so many poets, Shakespeare, so many things together. And this togetherness and also going to conferences and uh, cultural events together, it was uh, 
it, it, it was the most important uh, period of learning for my life. You also, at that period, uh, got to know Rukmini Devi quite well at Kalakshetra. Uh, in, what way, in what way was she an influence and why was her contribution to dance and to your view and growth remarkable? I had this advantage of uh, having Harindranath with me who knew Rukmani Devi very well. They were great friends. And he had an access to, whether it was Ms. Subalakshmi or whether it was Bala, he had an access to everybody. And I was like, uh, you know, like, uh, mm, in Madras they call it Wal, uh, the tail. I was, I used to follow him where, everywhere and I used to observe and I used to watch. And uh, that, uh, that's how I met Rukmani Devi. And uh, that, that, that was an advantage. I was able to see from very close quarters her work and her personality, the tremendous aesthetic quality of her life. I was uh, not uh, seeing her dance as much as the entire aesthetic and environment that she was always uh, she would carry with, with her. Like if there was a performance, the way she arranged the flowers or the way the uh, costumes, the colors, uh, tremendous. I thought she was the best dressed woman in India. And although you were in very close touch with this remarkable group of people, uh, Harindranath Chattopadhyay, Rukmini Devi, Bala Saraswati, uh, the fact was that at the end of the day, you were also in very rigorous training with your Guru Ilapa Pillai. Uh, how difficult and strenuous was that period of rehearsing for many hours a day? It was very nourishing. So it, the rigor didn't mean because the rigorous training was building up my energies, various kind of energies, sensual, physical, intellectual, all the energies. I was living in the midst of a very um, charged atmosphere. It was, a, it was very beautiful. It was not... Uh, it, it was not uh, exhausting or tiring or anything because all the time beautiful vibrations came to my life. It was a very rich life. And yet, despite this very Catholic training in, in classical Bharatanatyam, there came a time when you wanted to dispense with the decoration, the decorativeness of, of Bharatanatyam. Uh, you wanted to uh, get rid of the embellishment, the ornament, the way a female dancer was expected to wear her costume and makeup and, and hairstyling. In fact, I remember you once saying that beneath the audience you always resented and felt like protesting, uh, protesting against what you call the male gaze. It was uh, dolling up for dance. I had a terrific uh, resistance to that. I thought um, I was not myself, it was not my own face, it was not my own body. Everything changed with, the, uh, with this uh, going on the stage and dolling up. I did not like it. How did it start? I don't know. But the moment you put makeup on the face and that expression is all wrong, you know, it is... Uh, it, it's, a, it's a covering. The regalia of a traditional yeah. Bharatanatyam dancer, which was handed down also, was an essential part of what is known as the Devadasi tradition of dressing up, and it was partly also a, a tradition of seduction. Yeah, in, in fact, I asked uh, Bala, the, what kind of dress did you wear when you first appeared in public? And uh, it, it was a very uh, kind of that organdy with uh, lace, uh, quite uh, cheapy. And um, I made one sari like that. In fact, for, for a performance of mine in Bombay, I wore that at Bulabai Institute because it was a Devadasi costume, you know, the <laughs> authentic. So I went in for all those things and then I realized that I wanted to throw away the whole lot of this uh, baggage. I wanted to be myself. 
and this again every time after for every performance this uh, i had resistance to this and so when i started doing my own choreographic work i wanted the body to be very harmonious like as uh, harmonious as when you are rehearsing every day i needed to have that kind of a freedom in fact it was a process of separating the dance from performance yes i think uh, i i was a little bit confused at that time between dancing and performing i didn't like performing but i loved dancing and i didn't know uh, for me both the things at one point in my confusion everything was together so i stopped performing and i thought that i was i had to stop dancing in order to get some kind of a clear uh, understanding of what i was doing and why i was doing and where i was going and for whom i was dancing so all this had to be resolved in my mind so <laughs> basically it was uh, there was there was no reference points there was nobody uh, guiding me or telling me or that i didn't have any references because everybody dressed up and uh, dolled up and uh, well uh, i had to sort it out myself